Hello, I'm Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority, and today we are testing the Bot Lowrider. I'll be putting this board through the ringer as we go through some stability, tracking, maneuverability tests while in kayak formation, and then doing the same in paddleboard formation. Stay tuned. While we're seated, we're gonna do some tracking tests. So we have wind towards our back. So we're just gonna see how many strokes aside we can do here at turning. Keep in mind that I am actually on the seat that's lower back on the board. So the nose is uplifted, so that will affect on water performance and kayak formation. So just to keep that in mind. Anyway, let's see how many strokes aside I can do in kayak formation. One, two, three, yep. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, so about three strokes aside. Now, once again, this is because I'm seated on the tail, so that is uplifting the nose, giving me a little more maneuverability. Let's see now how many maneuverability strokes we can do. Okay, let's see the maneuverability strokes for kayak formation. We're gonna use this sailboat as sort of like the way marker. So let's get to it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about five, 5.2 um, side strokes there, reverse side stroke. Pretty good reading so far. So after paddling this board for about like a half hour, I feel like, um, <laughs> God damn it, Mark. <laughs> All right, so my overall impressions paddling this board is, it's been actually pretty windy today. So as I'm paddling, I am somewhat thankful that I'm in kayak formation because I'm able to do a few extra strokes while if you're just in power formation, you're kind of struggling a little bit more. So the lesson here is when you're in kayak formation, or sorry, when it's windy, go in kayak formation because you're lower down, so you're less drag against the wind. And also you just get more strokes. Okay, now we're gonna do some tracking tests. See how this board tracks. One, two, Three, four, the other side. One, two, three, four. So four strokes aside about, we're using this little ramp over here. So a fairly decent rating. I wasn't expecting too much because it is a much wider board. So just the shape of the board in general is this board isn't gonna be like a tracking star, like something that has like three fins, for example. Mind you, this does have a slide in speed sort of hybrid fin, but yeah. I kind of knew from the beginning this wasn't gonna be the best tracking board, but it's pretty good for what the shape is. Now we're gonna do some reverse side strokes, see how many side we can do we'll use the little log as kind of like test here one two three yeah I kind of figured that it would be at about this score three reverse sweep strokes is actually a very good score for this board um, the bot, Easy Rider did the exact same score, which kind of makes sense because it's very similar dimensions, just a little bit shorter. So it kind of makes sense that the score is what it is. Now compared to other all around boards, this stuff actually is a 
above average. Like three is about as good of a score as I've found so far on paddle boards. So a good score for this. Okay, now we're just gonna do some reverse side paddles. See how many we can do for a 360. Once again, using that log. So let's get to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, that's actually a very good score. Now, mind you, the wind may have aided me a little bit in that, so I would take this score with a grain of salt. But eight is a very good score. Um, it's one of the better ones we've had, actually. I think our average all around score is like 12. So you're already taking four strokes right off of that, which is really good. So in short, for maneuverability, this board is really good. So what are my overall on-water impressions with the Balch Lowrider 10.6? I like this board. I It's definitely one of the more stable boards I've paddled. Absolutely, 100%. Um, the seat is super comfortable in kayak formation. Like, you feel like you're almost on a lounge sofa. It's like that scene in Borat where he's sitting in the couch and he's like, king of the castle, king of the castle, king of the castle. Even rocking back and forth on this board. Stability wise, like, I'm not falling in. This board is very stable. And another thing to note as well is that whenever I was doing those maneuverability strokes, I, at no point did I feel unstable on the board. There's thinner boards that'll be between, you know, like, 32 to 31, maybe even 30 inches wide, where you do these maneuverability strokes and you have to kind of always be aware um, behavior, like if the wind picks up a little bit in the middle of a stroke, you gotta kind of correct it a bit. This, the wind was prevalent and I had no problems whatsoever. It just felt like a very stable platform. I uh, paddling this board in the wind, Definitely do it in kayak formation. I wouldn't recommend necessarily paddling this in paddleboard formation against the wind because two things, you'd be, you're gonna be like a makeshift sail essentially. The wind would be pushing against you. Well, if you're in kayak formation, you're sitting lower down and you're actually being, you're a little more aerodynamic. So you're not, you're not using as much drag per se. So is this a good board to get? Yeah, absolutely. I think the Bot Lowrider is a really good board to get. We're going to be doing a comparison video soon on the Lowrider versus the Easy Rider. Because right off the bat, I do believe the Lowrider, it had one stroke better for maneuverability. But I want to test them side by side so that I can get a much better reading because Easy Rider, I did the review like a few months ago. So thank you for watching this video. I'm Derek from Inflatable Sub Authority. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Always much appreciated. And if you want to see the review or find out where to get this board, just check the bio. Peace.